Hi all, welcome to Smart Catalyst 27 to 2019. Today we will be discussing these six topics. The first is related with India's uh, attack in Pakistan. The second is related with the rising fiscal deficit of uh, Indian government. Third is related with the news item on United Nations Global Compact. The fourth article is related with the new uh, index launched by Chrysler and Sidby. Fifth is related with the testing of new quick reaction uh, surface to air missile. The last article is related with the key missions being undertaken under the Ministry of Biotechnology. Let's move to the first article. Yesterday, Indian Air Force flights attacked Jaishi Muhammad targets inside Pakistan. In this context, it is important for us to know about the aircrafts being used in the process and other reconnaissance equipments being used by Indian Air Force during the process. 12 days after Pulwama attack, Indian Air Force undertook a non-military preemptive attack over the Jaishi Muhammad training centers inside Pakistan. Indian aircrafts crossed some 60 kilometers from the line of control and attacked the training center in Balakot town in Pakistan. Balako town is located in Maneshar district. The Maneshar district also houses one of the important rocket addict of King Ashoka. The attack was undertaken by Mirage 2000 fighter jets. These Mirage 2000s were armed with Spice 2000 and Crystal Maze Mark II facilities to which was used to jam the radars of Pakistani Air Force. And also the precision guided ammunition from Israel were used. And this precision guided ammunition can be used with a standoff ranges of 60 to 100 kilometers. In order to monitor and assess the process, Israeli Falcon aircraft and India's uh, Netra early warning aircraft systems they were used. This Falcon and Netra are reconnaissance planes. The main aim of these reconnaissance planes were to provide early warning to Indian Air Force and also to provide signal about the incoming of Pakistan F-16 flights. Uh, these ammunitions being used in the process were named as Vajra. Mirage 2000s has been the trusted companion of Indian Air Force. In the Kargil War 1999, Mirage 2000 jets dropped those laser-guided bombs destroying the infiltration camps. The Mirage aircrafts, they can fly at a maximum speed of 2300 km per hour with a range of 1550 km every fueling. Uh, we discussed about the reconnaissance plane known as Netra. What is Netra? Netra is first indigenously built airborne early warning and control system. It was developed by DRDO and it was in the news during 2017. This Netra system has an ability to track an area with 240 degrees along its sides. India is the fourth country after United States, Russia and Israel to have an indigenously developed airborne early warning and control system. This Netra radar mounted flight has an electronically scanned radar as a secondary surveillance radar using the conventional method and it also has some communication countermeasures. It has also got facilities to undertake voice communication with the control room and it is developed on Embraer 145 platform. And this Embraer 145 has a mid-air refueling capability thereby the reconnaissance mission can be undertaken for longer duration. What are the possible scenarios in the near future between India and Pakistan? The first is Pakistan might retaliate. Breaching into Pakistani territory tantamounts to breaching of Pakistan's sovereignty. The first scenario is retaliation of Pakistan. This is possible because the Pakistani Prime Minister has called the meeting of National Command Authority. National Command Authority oversees the nuclear weapons of Pakistan. The second scenario is uh, the talks may resume. This is because Pakistan is already facing pressure from other countries in the region. Also, due to the attack, uh, also, they are not in a proper financial economical situation to launch a military attack over India. For these reasons, they may resume the dialogue process. If Pakistan is retaliating for India's strike, India might strike again. So this might lead to a scenario where more strikes are possible between the countries. And war, any heightened es escalated number of strikes or escalated attacks between India and Pakistan will create a disfavored situation for conducting business in both India and Pakistan. And India will be worse affected with the investors fleeing from the market. This is a fourth scenario. Also, there is a uh, regional equilibrium existing in the region with China allying with Pakistan and other Asian countries having a close contact with India. With uh, this equilibrium existing between the Asian countries might tumble if China is joining hands with Pakistan in fighting India. This will have a regional effect. This is the fifth scenario. Let's move to the second article. The second article speaks about the widening gap of fiscal deficit in Indian economy. The increasing expenditure in Indian economy comparing to the receipts has widened the fiscal deficit and the fiscal deficit at the January 2019 stands at 121.5% of the target. Fiscal deficit occurs when a government's total expenditure exceeds the revenue being generated by the government excluding the money from the borrowings. 
In other words, the fiscal deficit also defines the amount that has to be borrowed by the government in order to finance its deficit. As per the complying with the FRBM Act, Union government has set up 3.3 percentage as target fiscal deficit target for the financial year 2018-19. But till January 2019, the fiscal deficit has widened to 121.5 percentage of the budget estimates. If we compare with the previous year, previous year it was 113.7 percentage, and this year the gap has widened more. Even in uh, interim budget 2019-20, the Union Finance Minister has accepted the fact that fiscal deficit would be marginally higher. Than the target 3.3 percentage. Since uh, fiscal deficit is about increasing expenditure and decreasing receipts, it's important for us to know about the total receipts and the total uh, expenditure. Till January 2019 of the financial year 1819, we have amassed only 67.5 percentage of target receipts, which is lower comparing to the previous year. The total receipts amounts to 12.3 lakh crore. Of that 12.3 lakh crore, 10.2 lakh crore is provided as tax receipts. Even the tax receipts have performed very badly comparing to the previous year. Still have only two more months in this financial year. Within the short duration, covering more than 30 percentage of the target is going to be a big task for the government. This indicates the fiscal deficit will be far higher than the said number 3.4 in the interim budget. Third article is about the gender equality summit that is being organized in New Delhi. The summit is organized under the aegis of United Nations Global Compact in collaboration with United Nations Sustainable Goals. United Nations Global Compact is a non-binding United Nations pact that has been established to encourage businesses worldwide. Make a note: it is not the government; it is businesses worldwide to adopt sustainable and socially responsible policies and to report on their implementation. In order to increase the sustainability and social responsibility of the businesses, many schemes, many processes, many initiatives has been undertaken all over the world. But there was a need for global organization like United Nations playing a lead role in that. That vacuum was filled by this United Nations Global Compact. It was established in the year 2000. On the recommendation of Kofi Annan led committee, earlier they were focusing on the implementation of Millennium Development Goal, and from 2015 their focus has turned down to the Sustainable Development Goal. This uh, United Nations Global Compact has ten principles. These ten principles are along the areas of human rights, labour, environment, and anti-corruption. As I mentioned earlier, it is about providing sustainable ideas to the businesses. It is one of the world's largest corporate sustainability initiative. This has come in the news because United Nations Global Compact, along with the UN Sustainable Development Goals, is organizing a conference in Delhi on gender equality. This gender equality summit aims at strengthening the initiatives being undertaken under Sustainable Development Goal Number no. Five, which is also batting for gender equality. One important fact to note about this United Nations Global Compact is that it is a founding member of United Nations Sustainable Stock Exchange. Crisis and Sidby in the year of 2017 launched a new index. Crisidex, which is a sentiment index, that is an index to assess the quality and the growth being witnessed in MSCI sectors. And the recent data coming out of this uh, Crisidex indicates that the small business sentiment is improving in India. MSCIs contribute to the majority of employment creation in the country, and the proper functioning of MSCI sector is equivalent to proper functioning of Indian economy. And in order to identify, in order to gauge the sentiment of MSCI sector, Crisil and Sidby in year 2017 launched an index known as Crisidex. The Crisidex is a composite index based on diffusion of eight parameters. And using these eight parameters, it measures the MSCI business sentiment on a scale of zero to two hundred. Normally, we used to have the scale of zero to hundred or zero to ten, but here the scale is between zero to two hundred. Zero indicates extremely negative, and two hundred indicates extremely positive. So, by assessing all these data, it has been found that the small business sentiment is improving in the country. MSC includes both manufacturing and services sector. Of the manufacturing sectors, 42 percentage report a good quarter, and services sector 41 percentage indicate a good quarter. Which domains? We spoke about the different sector, manufacturing and services. Under manufacturing, pharmaceutical, gems and jewelry, chemical, these domains are functioning more optimistic manner. Under services, we have the professional services, traders, logistics, power and power utility services faring better comparing to the other domains. The sentiment index is moving northward because of increase in order, thereby leading to increase in book size. Increasing order directly increases the employment opportunities available. Also, there has been an increase in profit after tax. Favorable macroeconomic factors is also an important factor. 
and uh, the NBFC liquidity crunch was a negative phenomenon happening in Indian economy but this negative phenomenon has got a positive repercussion by providing headwinds to boost the growth in MSC sector. Through this Crisidex index, it is uh, easier for the government to frame policy by identifying the various other factors that is stalling the growth of MSC sector. In this way, the index is doing the job it was touted for. This article is speaking about the new test being undertaken by DRDO in the indigenous developed quick reaction surface to air missile. This indigenously developed QR SAM is a short range missile. It has a capability to engage multiple targets at one go. And this is developed, it's a joint venture between uh, DRDO and Bharat Electronics Limited. And few versions of this QR SAM is also produced by the public sector Bharat Dynamics Limited. Bharat Dynamics Limited is also providing various artilleries and guns for Indian military. Since it is a quick reaction missile, it has a short range. The range is between 5 km to 30 km. This is a canister based high speed missile. Since it is a canister based missile, it can be used in various platforms like uh, trucks, train. The mobile air defense system in the QRSAM facility, it has the ability to destroy fighter jets, other missiles of short range and cruise missiles. One advantage of using this QRSAM is it can carry nuclear or biological payloads along with the conventional ammunition. The one uh, the uh, other uniqueness about this QRSAM is that uh, it can be deployed in harsh environments also. In addition to all these facilities, it is equipped with the night vision devices and sophisticated navigation system and because of this, the kill capability of QR-SAM missile is very high. The last article is about the key missions being launched by the government of India on the foundation day of Department of Biotechnology. February 26 every year is celebrated as the foundation day of Department of Biotechnology and every year it has a theme. In 2019, the theme was celebrating biotechnology, building India as an innovation nation. And every year, both in prelims and mains, we have a question on the impact of biotechnology in the economy or impact of biotechnology in innovation climate of India. It is important for us to know about the different initiatives being undertaken under the Department of Biotechnology. So, there is an umbrella mission uh, in the ministry. The umbrella mission is Atal J Anusandan Biotech Mission. I repeat, the umbrella mission under the Department of Biotechnology is Atal J Anusandan Biotech Mission. Under this mission, there are various other sub schemes being implemented. One such scheme is Unnati, undertaking nationally relevant technology innovation. This scheme is aimed to create tra transformation in health, agriculture, and energy sectors in the next five years. The next submission is Garbini. This is a mission to promote maternal and child health and also to develop prediction tools for preterm births. The preterm births are important reasons for neonatal mortality rate and stillborn death rates. The, the next submission under this umbrella mission is INSEPI. INSEPI is a joint initiative between India and SEPI. SEPI is Coalition for Epidemics Preparedness Innovation. It was launched under the aegis of World Economic Forum with the support of Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation with the initial investment of $100 million. It aims at providing vaccinations for various epidemics in the tropical region like uh, the MERS, Lhasa and Nipah fever. So joining hands with CEPI, India is aiming to develop affordable vaccinations. The various uh, nutrition reports indicate the looming crisis of malnutrition in India and in order to alleviate this malnutrition, the government has undertaken the portion of beyond. Under the portion of beyond, biofortification of food is gaining more importance. And the Department of Biotechnology has involved in a few projects to improve, to introduce biofortified and protein rich wheat in India. There has been the increasing menace of antimicrobial resistance all over the world. And Department of Biotechnology is working on providing affordable diagnostics and therapeutics for antimicrobial resistance. Biotechnology is not only has got applications in healthcare and other related areas. It has also got applications in various other areas like energy. The Department of Biotechnology is working on providing clean energy through creating opportunities for microbes led fuel synthesis. And also in Swachh Bharat initiative, it is playing a crucial role to provide greener and cleaner toilets. Thank you.